I think they all are, but this one, this one's really important. That's because these guys are lying to you. So when wedding media talks about the dollars and cents of weddings, invariably they talk about the average cost of a wedding. Now that's super convenient to talk about average, but it causes two real big problems. Well, they're, they're really the same problem. It centers around the idea that the average in being just an average doesn't really give you an idea how much weddings cost. Some weddings cost a couple hundred dollars. You know, all you need is a marriage license and a justice of the peace. And counterbalancing those weddings are weddings that cost hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. And somewhere in between that, you have an average of around $35,000, more than $35,000. So if you look at that, the average wedding costs, you know, 30 to $35,000. Besides the fact that you can't really tell how much people are actually spending on weddings. You know, very few people may spend that exact amount. A lot of them are spending below and a few of them are spending above and it's balancing out. More importantly, the very publications that are telling you that the average wedding costs thirty to $35,000 rarely show you a $30,000 wedding. That's because for the most part, those average cost weddings are fairly average weddings from an editorial standpoint. Now, every wedding in and of itself to the people involved really should be something special. And I think you can do that at any budget. But the reality is the things that pop in print and on websites, the things that make editorial splash, those things cost a lot of money. And it's very rare that these media outlets that are telling you that the average wedding is $30,000, $35,000, it's very rare that they're showing you $30,000 weddings. They're showing you $80,000 weddings and $100,000 weddings. They're showing you crazy destination weddings that may only cost $35,000, but that's because there's like two people there with the couple. They're showing you these things that don't relate to the actual budgets that they're showing you in the educational stuff. And so what happens is a lot of times I'll have clients come to me that really just don't have any idea how much this stuff costs because they're looking at these averages that are published in, in you know, wedding wire calculator and on the knot and everywhere else. And then they're looking at the weddings these places are actually publishing and they're thinking that they can get what they see in the pictures for what they see in the spreadsheet. And it usually doesn't work that way. For instance, for instance, the budget calculators on most of these websites say that three to 4% of your overall budget should be spent on all of your stationery. That's postage, day of stationery, like programs, menus, all that kind of stuff, and your invitations and save the dates. So, uh, because I don't math 35 times, 
at the high end of that, the high end of the average at 35,000 and the high end of the spend at 4% of the budget, that's $1,400. You know what $1,400 gets you for invitations these days? You know, it'll get you minted. It will get you uh, a lot of invitations from a book, but there are very few custom stationers that are gonna make you something that someone is gonna wanna publish in a magazine or publish on a website for $1,400. Um, this one kills me, Brides Magazine. Uh, average cost of wedding invitations, how much are they? This was published less than a year ago. And it starts out with, the average cost of wedding invitations is 5,000 to 8,000 for a set of 100. Five to 8,000. Now, I completely agree with that. My invitations, five to 8,000 on average. Uh, this is, uh, Catherine, I totally agree with you. The problem is, elsewhere on brides, I'm sure, I, I haven't found it yet. It's saying that the average wedding, spending the average amount on stationery should be like 14 or $1,500, like, like, like less than 2,000. And here it's saying 5,000 to $8,000 is the average. Something's wrong there, something's gotta give. Now granted, it does say digitally, uh, we can get to seven to $1,200. Okay, that, that kind of works, but that still doesn't include day of stationery. Escort cards, that doesn't include menus, that doesn't include programs, that's just the invitations. Offset and thermography, starting at $1,200. Letterpress, $1,600 to start with. $2,200 for engraving. Oil stamping, $1,800 plus. So, so the problem with this is, the overall budget tells you that you should be spending you know, $1,200, $1,400 total on stationery. And then you get into it and they say, okay, maybe you can get away with like $1,000 or $1,200, but really you're likely spending $2,000, $3,000, $5,000, $8,000 on average. Okay, so where does an $8,000 invitation set fit into that average budget when you're using those words? Now, I'm saying this to say, as a whole, the industry needs to have a better conversation about budgets. We need to be willing to be more open. The problem is every time you go to Pinterest or you go to one of these places and you see a pinned wedding that's beautiful and stunning and editorial, it's highly unlikely that that costs what an average wedding costs. No wonder couples are confused. This stuff just doesn't make sense. It's not fair to you that you wind up wasting your time going down paths that, that don't fit your budget because you just didn't know. Now I will say, I, I pulled up one here. Let's see, Snippet and Ink uh, has a section called Budget-Friendly Inspiration Boards. And one of the things that they have is uh, a few of them actually have real wedding budgets. They tell you how much money for how many guests. By the way, that's another thing that's really important. 35,000 for how many guests? Because if it's $35,000 for 10 guests, that's $3,500 a guest. That's, that's a pretty serious spend. That same $35,000 for 200 guests and you are not being served a five course sit down, you know, butlered menu. It's just not, it's not the thing, man. I believe all media is aspirational and weddings are such an aspirational time. Uh, I believe that for the most part, couples who have smaller budgets um, are still trying to find, you know, they're, they're trying to find ways to make their weddings beautiful. They are looking at stuff that they believe is budget friendly because these websites talk about budgets that are budget friendly or because they have the average budget, that 25, 30, 35,000 dollars. And they think that they can do something really awesome with it. But then they see all this stuff in the magazines. They see all this stuff on these blogs that has nothing to do with a $35,000 wedding. And they don't know that until they actually contact those vendors and start asking what they can get for their budget. Man, that sucks. That sucks for them to be embarrassed like that. It sucks for the vendors to have to de-educate everybody so they can re-educate them with, with realistic expectations. It's just not cool. I don't think it's fair to anybody. And so I wanna see that change. The only way I know how to do that is, hey, go comment in the comment section on these posts. Tell these people, hey, that's not realistic. If you see something that you really don't believe is realistic, tell them. I'm just frustrated by the mixed signals that these media companies send couples when they say the average wedding costs this, and this is what the average wedding looks like. Now, they may not come out and say those words, but when every single wedding has a certain look to it, what they're saying with their editorial is, this is what the average wedding looks like. You're in wedding media and you want to have this conversation, hit me up, I'll put my email below, uh, or give me a call and uh, I'd love to discuss it with you. Obviously, this is something that's really important to me, something I believe is crucial to the growth of the wedding industry. So uh, if, you, if you're if you along for that ride with me, if you, if you whatever you have to say, just put it in the comments below. I, I'd love to hear it. 
Uh, I do wanna show you what I've been working on today. I've teased it a little bit and it's not done yet, but I'm a step further. You saw earlier, I was printing the back of my friend Matthew Myram's card. Matthew makes visualizations to help wedding designers, uh, you know, florists, so wedding planners and, and, and environmental designers show the proposals of their environments to their clients. So he does 3D renderings of receptions and ceremony spaces and all that kind of stuff uh, so that the planner and the designer can show their client what that space is gonna look like as a part of their uh, as a part of their design process. So I'm working on his cards. I printed them this morning. Uh, you saw that, I printed them you know, over here on the Kluge um, and I wanted to show you what the back of it's gonna look like. This is, this is what it looks like. Uh, this one's, I, I, this one's a reject, I, I cut a little bit off. But um, this is Matthew's logo as a, um, as a pattern be behind acrylic, behind it, not in it, not on it. It's actually behind the acrylic. So on top of the acrylic, we're gonna foil stamp a quote and, uh, and his cards are gonna be a 16th of an inch, a full 16th of an inch thick. Um, and they're gonna be so stinking stunning. So what you saw me printing earlier is, uh, is his details that go on the other side. We'll glue those onto this side, trim it all out. Uh, it's, man, I am so excited about these business cards. Um, the super cool thing is when, when you laser cut acrylic, it actually finishes the edge for you. So these are, are nice and they're soft. They're not, you know, they're not edges that are gonna catch on things or cut people. Um, man, this is gonna be my favorite business card I've ever done. I can't wait to finish it. Anyway, you know the deal. If you like what I do, hit like, hit subscribe, tell somebody you know. Can't wait to hear from you. I'll see you next time.